Many years ago, I've heard about King Roger. I was never interested with the story. I didn't even know what it's, it, it was about until I started to work with this opera. And then I discovered that knowing the story in this piece is a really big thing because, well, the story is one thing and this what it means is another thing. The first King Roger I've done, it was in Paris, in Bastille, a few years ago, and we took this production to Madrid. So in both places, I sang it only twice, in both places it was very, it received very mixed reactions. Uh, huge ovation for the singers and the music and big boo for the staging because the staging was really controversial but it was in my opinion great. This is a fantastic piece which can bring any idea of the stage director on stage as far as it keeps the story and is logical. So in this you can, as I said, you can have historical things, you can have religious things or you can have a modern way of view. There is everything. There is political conflict because you can play it as a, even in, in modern times, as a, as a uh, uh, representative of one country coming to another country. You can play it that way. Mm -hmm. This is like interest of two different uh, uh, parties, you know, like you have a, like right wing or left wing and you have a conflict. So this is some kind of politic. It is definitely. The second thing, no romance. Please, there is double romance because King Roger loves his wife, but he also is some kind of affected by 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 uh, uh, um, Shepherd. Is he, this the strong personality is really so um, um, ma ma is magnetizing him, the King Roger, of course. So there is lots of passion. And, and there is romance. It's romance in between Shepard and Roxane, but between King Roger and his wife Roxana, and some kind of strange romance on maybe different level in between two men. So there is plenty of romance. But still King doesn't want to accept him. He wants to... First, he says in the libretto, you can see, when Shepard comes and he says who he is, King Roger says, to him, kill him. He says to his guards, kill him. And then one second later, no, don't kill him. Bring him to me, I will judge him this night. And then before Shepard comes this night, Roger cannot sleep. He is so nervous. He is so full of, of emotions which he never knew before. And then when he comes, finally, Roger is so afraid about, he doesn't even know how to speak, he shouts and then he mainly get, gets lost in this whole situation and he is overpowered by Shepard finally and Shepard tells him, you don't even think, you don't dare, you shouldn't, you don't dare mm -hmm. to put me to jail because I dictate what I want to do and I take your people and I take your wife because you invited me, this is your fault. I take them for, away from you and I take, I take them to my, to my uh, kingdom. And they go with him without one question. So there is something, uh, this is a very good question, who is the king in this whole situation? King who cannot really stop his people. King who, who is left only with his servant, one servant, Edrizi. The end of the whole story is that Roger comes to look for his wife. When he finds his wife somewhere in the desert in between stones, he's just um, having like Fata Morgana, I don't know what it, Fata Morgana, it exists in English. This is when you are on a desert, like Sahara, yeah. Sahara Desert, you see the things or villages see, yes, you, and it doesn't visions. exist. Visions, mirage. yes. Yeah. Mirage. mirage. Yeah. He has this kind of mirage that he sees his wife or he really sees his wife because we don't know because then when he asks her where is the, the the shepherd she says that shepherd is like a fog like a like a he doesn't exist he was as like a cloud and now he doesn't exist so we don't know who is mentally ill in this pro, in, in this situation is king roger having another hallucination or 
is really Roxana talking to his crazy man. What are you talking about? It's you created thing, you created uh, the God or shepherd in your mind, and now you are asking me, and I don't even know what you what you're talking about. So we never know if he is still mentally fine, or he is really following his wife, and then there is some mystical, um, beyond our understanding situation when the shepherd comes, shepherd who used to be, as Roxana said, the cloud or fog and disappeared, certainly he comes, he appears as, the, as a voice. But then you have again the song, the last thing of the opera is a song for the sun, to the sun. So Roger says, uh, sun, sun, uh, uh, in this sun he sees the sea full of um, seagulls and boats with white um, uh, sails, yes, and then, and then he sings the last words that, uh, that he will uh, bring his own heart, crystal white heart, and he will offer it to the sun. And that, then the opera ends. So you don't know it's a metaphor. He is offering his life to, to his people or to the God, or, and he is still, and he's dead, or he is still alive, but he is crazy, and he is saying out of mind things. Or is that maybe this is just his dream? It's very esoteric. It's very esoteric. I love it. I love it. So you see, this is this is what I said. I said it because I wanted to show that you can keep some kind of story that, which is written, but you can add to this so many different things, and it will still work. As far as you are logical in this, what you do, and people will understand what you want to say. It's a magic, magic thing. <laughs> That's the, it will be basically my second production because the first one I did in Paris and repeated it in, in Madrid. So this will be my second production. So I am looking forward to do new things. I, I'm pretty sure it will be a big uh, change, challenge and, and big travel, big journey through through uh, the ancient world coming and putting it all together with our times. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to do that, especially in Santa Fe, because I know you a little bit, guys. I've been three times to Santa Fe. Three? Two. Only two? Don Giovanni, A Marriage of Figaro, and that's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, was on, I was two times to Santa Fe, but I'm madly in love with that place. And I'm madly in love with King Roger, peace. So then it will be two big wonderful things for me yes yes that that um, I'm really happy that, that, that you decided that you guys decided to do it I have no idea what it is about Santa Fe it's just the place where I feel at home it's well I'm I love nature so much so that nature is spectacular in Santa Fe and surrounding areas from Santa Fe in between the shows I travel to those great places like like Zion Park, uh, uh, um, Bryce Canyon, like Arches, uh, uh, Grand, uh, Grand Canyon of course, um, Monument Valley, those places are just out of mind. The beauty is incomparable and I've been to many places around the world. There is basically nothing else like that and in Santa Fe the, the whole opera placement on the hill and the open conspect and uh, I remember one Don Giovanni performance when the Commendatore comes at the end and the storm was coming and those lightning lightnings mm -hmm. behind us just did the whole staging. We didn't have to even move one finger. It was enough. It, I was shaking. I, w I had goosebumps playing Don Giovanni and well maybe those situations and I had I've got coyotes on my roof, on, on my, uh, at uh, my house where I, I stayed in Santa Fe. And I could 
watch them and I could hear them. And then you have those giant squirrels. I don't know. They, they live underground and we always run with them around the house because I try to shoot the pictures. I, I do also many pictures. I did even exhi um, I had an exhibition um, in Krakow and the main subject was the, the Santa Fe and, and those, those great places which I mentioned. So it doesn't look like Poland. <clears throat> it doesn't look like Poland, but I just bought a new house close to Krakow in Poland, and I have maybe not as great, but very comparable view from my terrace and from my garden, um, because I'm on the top of the hill and I see the mountains in the, in front of me. It's wonderful. So maybe that was also the reason why I bought this house. Because when I've seen this kind of views uh, in Santa Fe and uh, last time uh, I, I've got such a great house with a great swimming pool and hot tub on the deck. Well, do I have to continue? <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. In the same way, like I love Florida and Caribbean uh, islands in the winter time to go and to have some sun and warm weather. In the same way, in the summertime, I love to go to, to Santa Fe, to, to New Mexico.